Tyler. Hello, how Hi. are you? I'm George. Oh, nice great to meet, to meet you. Come in. I'm Boy George. I'm a singer, an artist, DJ. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I'm intrigued. I heard about Tyler through my manager, who was very into the whole clairvoyant kind of medium type of thing. He was really keen for me to do it. Do you know who I am? No, not, okay. not really. <laughs> okay. No, sorry. <laughs> My last boyfriend didn't know where I was either until about six months into our relationship. Oh, and then he was no. like, you really look like boy George. I was like, well, that's who I am, silly boy. <laughs> that's good, that's good. I'm glad that you don't know too much about me. I'll just kind of start scribbling. We'll see what comes through. We'll see what makes sense. We'll, make, we'll see what doesn't. Yeah, I just have a couple people popping in. I'm a bit uncomfortable with talking with people that have passed. You know, I feel it's a bit weird. For sure, younger male energy that, that passed and died too soon. And that was kind of coming through on the way here. No. He's being a bit reserved. Okay. All right. There's a reference to alcoholism and then a reference to heroin addiction. He's referencing to what looks like three years where I feel like I'm on the right track. And then I fall off the boat. And, and I'm getting back into some of these mindsets and these behaviors, and then I pass away. Do you know of anybody? Oh, a lot of people. Who would have dealt with both, <laughs> but with both though at the same time? A lot of people. It's quite hard for me to kind of pinpoint that on any one particular person. He must be nervous, this kid. He's getting no help from George. The specific thing here is that there was a performance done after the individual died that was in their memory. But he did write wonderful words for, for him at the funeral. So if someone did a show and devoted something to him, that might be the gist, but the specific focus is electric guitar. He's so obviously Steve Strange. Yeah, he doesn't want to give him too much. Then I don't. So does that fit any to your knowledge for you personally? <laughs> it's quite vague. It's quite vague. As a medium, I need the validation. It's such an essential part of the process. It makes it a little tough when I do a reading and someone isn't really willing to validate or willing to really figure out where something could fit. I would say with the energy that came through that acknowledged, you know, passing at a, at a young age and referencing to music connection, he showed me electric guitar. There's lots of things there. Yeah. I can't quite pinpoint the connection for you personally. I mean, I have a friend that I'm doing a, um, I'm actually involved in a benefit for a friend of mine on the 22nd of November this year, so that could be a, 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 a connection, sure. you know. Did this person deal with two addictions? Oh, more than two, I think. <laughs> Did they have two primary, uh, heroin and alcohol? Yeah, period. probably both of those, so yeah. This guy's good. Someone else is coming through. Do you know who had the breast cancer in family? <sighs> My grandmother. Okay, because the emphasis here is I'm going on mom's side of the family. Would that have been on mom's side? Yeah. Because when she comes through, she's just an interesting kind of duality of being very charming, very nice, and very straightforward, and very, like, uh, didn't mince words. <laughs> very scary. <laughs> very scary, very powerful. My grandma was a tough cookie. Sure. What's interesting is that she has a closer relationship to you on the other side than she did in life. That's probably true. I was quite an eccentric kid, you know, and I think, I think she tried to kind of get it out of me, but more because she was frightened that people were going to hurt me. Right. My grandmother never really got to see me do well. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't know me and my sort of successful life. So in a way, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I've always thought it's a real shame she never really got to see what I did because, well, there's a lot of things I'm glad she didn't see, but I think that, you know, my grandmother would have been very proud of the things that I've done. When she comes through, she views you as a very independent person. She views herself as a very independent person. She feels like that's something you have in common. <laughs> when yeah. she comes through, she sees a kindredness with you. She sees a connection with you. Particularly now, because, you know, my, my life is in a really good place, and I think that, you know, she would probably be saying, finally, right. you know, thank God. <laughs> I like the idea of my grandmother being proud of me. You know, we were very, very much kindred spirits, even though I probably wouldn't have realized it as a kid, you know? But my, my grandmother was tough, and she, she didn't take crap from anyone, you know? So I feel like we're quite similar. I think he does have a real gift, and I'd like to see him again. It's nice to go into something with a bit of cynicism and come out with a bit of maybe an altered point of view. Hello. 
Welcome. Whoa, hi. Welcome. I'm Tyler. How are Tyler, you? Tyler, I'm Rob Dudek. Welcome to the oh, Fantasy great Factory. Great to meet you. My gosh. This Come is on in. Incredible. My name is Rob Dudek. I'm a professional skateboarder entrepreneur with multiple television shows on MTV. So I wow. built a basic skate park for my office. Oh my gosh, what a fun place to do a reading. I've never done yeah, anything look, even like look. it. Walking up, I was expecting an actor or maybe a singer, but as soon as I walked in here, I saw exactly what he did. Boom, here we okay. go. Okay. Wow. However, I had absolutely no idea who he was when he answered. Wow, well, thank you so much for having me. This is amazing. So I can do two separate types of readings. We can do more your personal life, or we can crack a shot at the, the medium aspect, if you'd like. Yeah, no, to me, it's okay. like do whatever, sure. whatever's strongest cool. to okay. you, right? I don't have any okay. expectations. I feel like I'm pretty... Pretty medium proof. Cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no worries. Okay, let me check. It's all good. <laughs> this guy might be a little skeptical. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I'm going to navigate this one, but I can tell that I'm not getting the most open vibe. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so. Sorry, we got that and that. So in the other room watching currently is my wife. You know, for me, I think it's really interesting to see where she connects in the reading. What, what did you say your first name was again? It was... Robert. Robert, okay. <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> or to your knowledge, are you the only Robert in your family or is there another one? My grandfather's name is Robert. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the connection here is I feel like I have to bring up two Roberts, not just one. Do you know much about your grandfather's passing? Uh, a little bit. Okay, as he's coming through, he's not making a big deal about his passing. As he actually transitioned, there's also an emphasis specifically on lungs and breathing. So I don't know if you're aware of that, but that's what's coming through with this is I'm like, and I try to inhale and trying to exhale. To do that mechanism is so stressful to me to, to fully kind of do the inhaling yeah. and the exhaling. He does acknowledge that he feels like he went peacefully. So please know that, that for him, it, it was in some aspect a relief. So he smoked his entire life, and then uh, he eventually was so bad that then he was on a respirator. Right. But he, his lungs healed up enough in those last six months where he could live without the respirator. Okay. And then died in his sleep. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He hit a couple of crazy references connected to my grandfather, the multiple Roberts, and then ultimately nailing that it was lungs and breathing. You know, I, it was pretty remarkable. There's a reference to what looks like Ellie, or Lily. I'm looking at what looks like E, and then L, and then L, and then E is kind of the only way that I would be able to describe it. You can't be messing with me, dog. <laughs> come on, man. You got to be Googling this stuff, dog, before you come in here, dog. Come on, we're not going to what, what is that? Come on, man. Uh, seriously. <laughs> you, you messing with me, dog. No, not the slightest. You messing with me, dog. No, come on. No, that's what's coming through. Who is that? Um, September birthday, sudden passing, E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. No Google. No Google. This is just... Oh, this is embarrassing. I don't even recognize you. <laughs> don't worry about that part. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yes, it, just, it gives me joy you don't know who yeah, I am. Yeah, it gives me joy. <laughs> okay, um... Talking about Michelle Thomas. Okay. She was my old co-star for Family Matters. Right. And she died of stomach cancer. Quickly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And she had a lot of friends. She had a lot of friends in the music industry. Come on, man, you gotta be Googling this stuff, man. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. Her birthday, September 23rd, 1968. Wow. Wow. So that's two days after the, the 21 you said. Right. You about to get me memed up on Instagram. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh. Not that grandpa. All right. 
Hello. Hi, Hi. how's it going? How are you all? Jamie, nice to meet you. Jamie. In terms of the spectrum of believing in a medium and, and this whole process, I'm not like a true believer. I'm more of a skeptic, I think. So if you had to give yourself a title, what would it be? I would say probably clairvoyant medium. Okay, so a, a clairvoyant is actually a French word, and it means clear sight. So okay. most of my impressions come through through visions. I see okay. images. Um, and then as a medium, a medium is basically just kind of means literally in the middle. It's okay. someone who acts as a conduit for information. But would you say today you're more interested in hearing about your personal life or people who've passed? Well, kind of in a weird spot, and I think it just would be nice to have a little bit of clarity Absolutely. or validation. I feel a little lost currently. I just need some validation as to like if I'm doing the right thing, if I'm on the right course. Now, the interesting thing that's kind of coming through, they're having me talk about you in your life. Like 2019, early 2019, they keep acknowledging launching, launching, launching. This client wants to focus on their personal life, which is very different than a medium reading. When I focus on a client's personal life, I use my guides to come through and communicate information. So when you hear me say they, that's me referencing to a group of people coming through and communicating information. But one of the interesting things is they're having me talk about the love life and the career balance. And they keep putting a very strong emphasis on that and being able to balance that. Okay. They're basically not emphasizing health and they're not emphasizing family. They're emphasizing love and career and they kind of are going back and forth between the two. Love, career, love, career. Now, I feel like your love life in some form is going to, to allow for an opportunity in a career context. So I know it sounds weird, but okay. hear me out with this because the way this kind of comes through is basically if we have an opportunity to do something with someone who we're in a relationship with, taking this personal side of our lives and being able to implement this on a larger scale. Okay. Is it possible that you could see yourself working with your partner in any capacity, like doing a business together, doing something together, anything yes. along those lines? Okay. But the thing is, is I just want to make sure when we mix the personal life and the business side that it doesn't affect things mm -hmm. on, the, on the relationship. It's their way of basically being like, this is good, we need to do this, we need to be set on this. Is this something that has been in the works or thought about? Can I about? say something? Yeah. Can I, sit down? Can I tell you? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we love what we do. We're both actors. Gotcha. There always is a teetering balance of like making a marriage work 3,000 miles apart when right. we're both on different cities and locations. Sense. And he is working on something spectacular. It's such a big project and it's such a passion project. Mm -hmm. And there is something for me to be a part of it. So it's so crazy you say that. And it is gearing towards next year. I keep seeing superhero stuff, and this is good to keep in mind. Something like Marvel, DC, like kind of that vibe. Have we done anything oriented in that field yet? You didn't know that you're you're reading Swear me, to God, right? On my life. I'm currently on a Marvel show. No. Yeah, and I play a superhero. Yeah, I play mutant. But I I'm on a Marvel show called The Gifted, and I also do one voice animated called Big Hero 6, but they're both Marvel shows. That's insane. Literally, so for you to be very specific. Swear to God, didn't recognize you. <laughs> I've done 188 that's... of these, and I have never walked into this ever knowing. And I'm feeling you right now. It's, okay. That's so cool. I'm All excited. Right. I'm going to watch the show uh -huh. now. <laughs> no worries. Let me see. So I've been trying to kind of figure out whether to say this, <laughs> but they're bringing me to baby stuff. That's really hot there. They're bringing this energy forward as something to keep in mind. In your life, one of your big purposes is going to be to be a mother figure for a child. That's something to keep in mind that, without a doubt, I know. The thing is, is how we get there, it seems a little complicated. We're gonna go, go through some hurdles to get there, is the way I would describe it. Mm. It's nothing to worry about, but if there are alternative forms of fertility that have to be done, or if it takes a little while, or if there's something unique with a pregnancy, just be very conscientious in the event that that is something you do? Because of my age, I'm 35. You know, it's always a question of like, should I wait, should I do it now? You know what I mean? Like, it's literally the topic that I think of waking up and it's the, it's the topic that I think of when I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Is this worth it? it is. You know? Absolutely. Okay. And you can do it together, and there's yeah. ways it can be done together. And it's a strain that it isn't always going to be there. I think yeah. you two, location wise, that'll work out ultimately. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, no rush on that one. Yeah, but... tell, tell that to my husband. Yes, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a unique just, stress that yeah. successful women have exactly. of having to navigate the professional responsibilities and then some of the societal yeah. and familial expectations. And... Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I it's give a it lot. to you. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. A lot. It's yeah. incredible. Any woman in any career can and can relate because they're juggling so many things at once. Yeah. If you're having doubts, I think doubts are normal. It's normal to feel discomfort. I think when you know what you're meant to do, life kind of finds a way to open up yeah. those doors to let you do it. Yeah. It just needed that kind of kick in the ass perspective of like, huh, I feel so sorry for myself. And instead of that, it really is just be grateful. Like it's only gonna get better, you know? The universe has clearly set this up. It happened for See? I just needed a good talk. I know, right? Oh, we got it. We worked it out. Well, thank you. But I think I got exactly like the validation that I needed, you know? Yeah. Literally when he was like, on a marvelous show. I was like, are you kidding me? Eddie's more of a skeptic than I am. I'm not a believer. I know about body language. I know about all these techniques and skills that people know on how to manipulate others. And I know she's a believer, uh, I am. but she. And I believe in a lot of things. The only other thing is sometimes people bring objects. Did you bring any objects today? I did. Oh, cool. Do you mind if we lay them out on the table by chance or just have them there? Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. And then, Eddie, did you have any objects? I do not. Okay, no worries. I'm just going to give it a sec, see what comes in. We'll go from there. So, let's see. Yeah. All right. There's a reference on mom's side of family. Mm -hmm. This is in a living context. So mom's still here? Um, mom is in the other room. Oh, cute. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. So yeah. great. Your mom's side of family comes through really strongly, which is just yes. good to keep in mind. I knew it. I knew it. There's this woman that's coming through connected to your mother, and she's like intense and adorable and lovely, but she's like the main reason why I'm here today. Since you're here. So <laughs> I knew it. She's one of the big ones. Yeah. My mom. It's my mom. She's bringing me back to childhood. There's a story of a small child preparing food, um, and we're talking little, like five, okay. six, seven, making eggs, for example, like on the stove. It's just like a situation where a child basically doesn't have a parent there to make this food, and a child does it like very, very young, like very, very little. That could, I'm not sure my mom can clarify this, but sure. it could have been my mom because my grandmother was hospitalized most of her life. Makes sense. My mother, my mother went away to an institution when I was seven, so I kind of stepped in to help take care of my dad and myself. She was schizophrenic. Oh and she spent a lot of my mom's childhood in the hospital. Wow. My mom had a rough time. I never saw signs of my grandmother being schizophrenic. As I got older, I heard stories. She had different episodes that would happen and then they would put her back in the hospital. I didn't know really any of that. I didn't right. know that she suffered. She was just my grandma. We would sleep on the couch. I'd spend the night at her house a lot. She was just sweetest, tiniest little thing you've ever <laughs> seen. She would smoke like a fiend. Ah. Smoke like, a, just sit there with her legs curled. I, she, they were wrapped around seven times, I think. And she'd sit there and she'd just smoke That's all the time. Wow. All the time. What a woman. And I could do no wrong. That's right. 